Hello, hello. Welcome to the World Stage uh, Americas and uh, to the FinTech South. So I am Rodrigo Dantas. I'm principal with UI, currently serving as the Americas Payments Leader uh, based out of here in Atlanta. And uh, today, very happy to be the moderator of this amazing panel on the digital transformation of one of the largest banks in the world, actually. Uh, so to to participate of, of this discussion, this amazing conversation here with me, uh, we have two great executives. So we have Cesar Gon. Uh, Cesar is, a, is an entrepreneur in the technology digital space. Uh, at the age of 23, he founded CINT, a pioneer digital service company to help large enterprises make shifts at scale. Under his leadership, as CEO, the company has achieved 25 years of consecutive growth and global expansion. Gon is a computer engineer with master's degree in computer science. Last year, 2019, he was also awarded EY Entrepreneur of the Year in Brazil. Congrats, Gon. And, uh, and for, for those that are entrepreneurs yourselves in the audience, he is also an active investor. So we have a shark here on the panel as well. You can tag him after. So Gon, thank you. Welcome to the panel. Thank you, Rodrigo. My pleasure to be here. All right. And to, to, to have this conversation with Gon and I, we also have uh, Ricardo Guerra. So Ricardo is the CIO of Itaú Unibanco. For 27 years in the organization, the executive is responsible for the entire technology platform, software development, and technology operation, as well as the adoption of new technologies and digital transformation initiatives. Before becoming the CIO, he was director of digital channels from 28 to 2014. And he was also working in several areas, such as credit risk and financial products. Ricardo graduated in civil engineer at the Scola Politecnica of University of Sao Paulo and business administration of, at the business school of the same University of Sao Paulo. Great school, by the way. Uh, he obtained his MBA in 2002 from Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University, another great school, by the way. So, Ricardo, thank you and welcome to our panel. It's a pleasure thank to have you here. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. All right. So let's get started. Uh, I'll start with you, Cesar. Why don't Why don't you you introduce a little bit of CINT uh, and and how how this plays into what what you do? Sure. Uh, well, CINT is a is a tech company, as I mentioned, uh, is a tech service company, founded twenty five years ago in Brazil. Now we are operating in eight countries and work with some of the largest companies in the world across several industries. CNT is positioned as an end-to-end -end, uh, partner for digital transformation. We have a global team of more than 3,000 professionals, meaning strategy design, uh, software engineering, and data science. Uh, the US is our largest and fastest growing market. Uh, where we have nine offices, including San Francisco, Atlanta, Chicago, New York City. and But we also have operations in Canada, UK, Portugal, Japan, China, and Australia. Truly global. Metaphor well, metaphorically, our job to be done is to accelerate our clients' inevitable journey uh, on being translated uh, from the industrial center to the digital center. And, and this transformation is, is a non-trivial combination of, of course, technology, a lot of technology, but also leadership model. Uh, we can talk more about this during this panel. Fantastic, great, great, impressive uh, global organization already. Amazing, congratulations. Um, uh, Geha, uh, talk to us a little bit about Itaú. Let, let the audience uh, understand better this, this bank. I mean, that besides ha had been my first job, so I started my career at Banco Itaú many, many years ago. We don't wanna go there. But yeah, so tell us about your bank and, and, and give us a, an idea of how complexity and the size of it. Sure. So uh, it, it's a large bank, one of the largest uh, in the world. Uh, we are actually 95 years old, so it's a very old company, traditional company that's trying to do uh, our own transformation uh, around technology and digital. Uh, just to give a sense of the size of the bank, uh, we have this day something around 56 million customers. Uh, which is pretty much a quarter of the population in the country, right? In Say it again, how, how many? 56 million active customers. Uh, we are uh, pretty much a Latin America bank. Uh, we have operations everywhere, but the main operations are in Brazil, 
Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Uh, and we have offices uh, in the US, London, Portugal, and, and other places. Uh, the size of our footprint is also uh, large due to uh, the size of the country, of course. Uh, we have something around 45,000 ATMs, uh, something around 4,000 branches, and declining, right? Uh, we, are, we are becoming digital. So uh, among the largest banks, uh, we are uh, the, one of the ones that has fewer branches, although uh, 4,000 branches is a lot, right? But we are, we are definitely shrinking that, that footprint. Uh, it's, it's harder to talk about uh, money figures just because the exchange rate is so crazy these days. But, but just to give an idea, uh, we have something around 400 million in assets, dollars. Uh, which used to be much more before uh, the hell had the, uh, the sort of... Uh, 400 billion, right? 400 billion dollars, yeah. yes. 400 billion dollars in assets. Uh, and uh, the market cap these days is something around 46 to 50 billion dollars. Uh, it used to be uh, 100 or something when the exchange beta, uh, rate was better. But again, uh, it depends a lot. Uh, something that is very curious about the bank, we are, or before COVID, we were the largest uh, return on, equ on equity on the planet. So uh, there was no bank that had, that pay more uh, its shareholders than Itaú uh, before COVID. After COVID, uh, things are a little bit more complicated, of course, for everyone. But um, it's a bank that is very well managed uh, in terms of costs and, and revenues. And uh, we're proud of ourselves of uh, paying well back our, our investors and, and going through a major transformation. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, with with all that amazing size and complexity, and uh, but at the same time, that amazing performance, uh, what was the case for change? I mean, when we, when we think about digital transformation, many people say, oh, it's to improve customer experience or it's to be more effective in cost or both or it's something else. So what, when we talk about the digital transformation of Banco Itaú, what are the elements that you would highlight as the most important, more, more critical ones? Uh, in sure, sure. That, that's a very good question, Rodrigo. And we got asked all the time that kind of question. Uh, the world is changing. Uh, we are seeing a lot of transformations uh, in all the industries. That's, that's uh, I'm sure the audience is pretty much aware of that. Uh, and what we are seeing is that if we don't transform, if we don't uh, follow that path towards digital transformation, uh, we are not going to be the leaders uh, that we are today. We're not going to be uh, paying back our investors the way we do today. And, and the reason for that is that when we look at the digital transformation anywhere in the world, in any industry, uh, what we are seeing across the board is an empowerment of the customer. The customer uh, is definitely having way better experiences that uh, one could have five years ago or 10 years ago uh, or 15 years ago the experience all increases in terms of getting better and better for anything that you do. And it's not different for finance. Uh, we're seeing lots of new companies coming out, offering much better products. And we are seeing a shift towards, uh, towards the customer. Uh, everyone is empowering the customer in that sense. And banks have to do the same thing. Banks have to really work to get better services for the customer, honestly get better, better services, work to get uh, solve customer problems to uh, definitely have less uh, attrition in everything that pretty much customers do with money. We are a universal bank. We work pretty much in everything. Here in Brazil, uh, banks are insurance companies as well. So we work uh, from current accounts uh, to uh, credit cards, insurance, to large corporations, anything that you can imagine. Uh, we have in terms of financial products. And okay, we so have let, let me let me pause you just a minute, just to sure. the benefit of our audience here, and, and on that description of the bank. So you're saying that you are a retail bank, you are a corporate investment bank, a broker dealer. You have also other diversified financial services businesses as credit cards, insurance, auto finance, and and potentially. Mortgage, security services, whatever you can imagine, and, and and the same and the same. Obviously, you have the per, commercial bank and personal bank, but a yeah. client can be a client of everything, right? I mean, the respect yeah. can be an SME, can be a large corporation, can be uh, people from any kind of income. Uh, in Brazil, uh, that's that's very broad, right? So, uh, so we play pretty much in any finance arena, and and the challenge just becomes bigger because. 
you have to do that transformation in all customer journeys. So uh, it doesn't matter what kind of product people consume or companies consume, it doesn't matter which kind of company or person you are, uh, you are enduring that transformation in terms of behavior and we have to follow offering better services and products in that, in that sense. Amazing. And go on. Yeah. What, what, um, how, how, I mean, how do you guys play into that? Sure, sure. I think Ricardo was very clear on the why. I can add a little on the how or why CIT was involved. Right. Uh, to transform a giant like Itaú, Ricardo and his leadership team embraced an approach that is, is really the result of more than two decades where CIT was facing this kind of cultural challenge. We call this approach the Link Digital. Uh, Link Digital is a combination of of course, the disruption of digital in terms of aggressively using tech data design, but with the discipline and the leadership frame of mind of Lean. And, and we, we have been applying the same umbrella of methods and practices in different countries and industries with quite solid results. By the way, we just published a book named Faster Faster, The Dawn of Lean Digital, where we present our, our learnings on, this, on creating this approach uh, based on CIT experience, of course, but also with the learnings of our clients like Itaú, Coca-Cola, and other large companies. By the way, Ricardo is portrayed and is the hero of chapter four. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we can double click on, on the link digital later on, but I think this is maybe the, the, the conceptually uh, uh, approach we, we designed together for this huge transformation. Mm -hmm. All right, that, does he wear a cap as the hero or he rides a bike? I can see some bike. <laughs> I ride a bike. I ride a bike. No cap. <laughs> <guy. laughs> all right, all right. That's great. So, Ricardo, I mean, yeah, based on what what would you what you what would you say was unique about your digital transformation journey? I mean, or of all the, all those elements that you've mentioned. What, what pops up to you as of? So if we hadn't nailed this or if we hadn't it, you know, tackled this com this component the way we did, nothing else would that work. Uh, that's a very good question again, Rodrigo. Um, uh, I would say that transforming a big company like this, uh, you have to be uh, in the first place resilient because you're gonna find a successful company with uh, very smart and successful people that have a, a, a way of doing business. And uh, out of the blue, you just have to convince people that they have to do it totally different. So uh, I, I was speaking to a very good entrepreneur these days, and I've heard something very good from him. He said, to work in a digital company requires you to really understand how business are being done these days. To do a business, uh, a digital transformation, is a totally different skill. You have to understand how business is done these days, but you also have to have the skill, the patience, and the, release, the re resilience to transform other people. So uh, what comes to my mind is you really have to transform the culture of the company around the customer in a way that usually people don't grasp. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the profound change that you have to do uh, around the customer is so big that people usually think that, no, I already talk to my customer. I already do my research. And uh, I always ask my customer if they like the products that I'm thinking that I will launch. Uh, that's not the point, right? It's, it's about building along with the customer. It's about letting the customer build your products and services for you. So it's a way more radical transformation. Uh, and along with that, along that mind shift, you really have to have a tech platform that allows the speed, that allows quality. Otherwise, uh, the customers will be faster than you. Their needs will change faster than you can deploy new solutions and services. So uh, building a speed around technology is key for this new business model. And, and the last point that I would say is what Cesar here is expert, which is the methodology that you work. If you don't work in a methodology where you really avoid pitfalls, where you really avoid talking about internal problems, where you really eliminate waste and deliver value to the customer by having a lean uh, mindset where you spend time internally talking about customers' problems, 
And there's different ways of doing this, uh, lean, agile, design thinking, whatever you can imagine. Uh, if you don't do this, you're not going to get there either. So it's a, it's a, so a long story short to your answer, uh, it's a basket. If you don't have all those levers, you may change a lot and you're not going to see results. So, so Gon, uh, Geha just teed up the perfect ball for you in terms of the methodology. I I'll definitely want you to explore that a little bit further, but feel free to, to touch the other components that he mentioned as well, right? The tech platform and the mindset. I think though that, that combination of the basket, uh, I'd love to hear your perspectives on, on that as well. Sure, Roberto. Uh, I believe what is unique about this journey, Itaú journey, is not only the seriousness and the depth, which we, they enter in this transformation journey, but how they embrace embrace the, the idea that we need a methodology and they embrace Lean Digital. Uh, I see, uh, we can see, I like to see this kind of transformation as three major redesigns. I think the first one is the most visible one. It's a radical change in the way you design, you build and you evolve your digital experience, the way you create your digital products, the platforms, the way you handle data. It's of course about squads, agile, DevOps, design thing, cloud, microservice, everything, this never ending list of math and technology. But uh, I think there are two other two redesigns that are much less visible and, and maybe much less glorious, but equally important. The second uh, big redesign is about the management system meaning the way they do planning, budget, incentives, reporting, reviewing of activity. Uh, it means a management system, a new management system that is focused on connecting the strategy, the digital strategy and business goals on the daily work of the squads, of the multifunctional team. I think this is the second big thing. And finally, the third redesign and probably the most difficult one, I think uh, Hikar just touched that, was to promote a new approach for leadership development to foster behavioral change on a, on a way that this, on a way that senior management hap, happened at Itaú. To be frank, it's, it's quite impossible to leverage innovation and real agility without not only a platform, a technical platform that allowed that, but without a leadership model that is not the command and control leadership style. So a, a new leadership model is the real, the concrete foundation for, for the advent of a new culture, a uh, culture that is more innovative, more fast, that's going to leave the slow by design mode in the past. So I think this is, this is a, a broad way to see uh, this huge transformation in terms of redesigns. And I, I love that point from Cesar Rodrigo, because uh, what big companies fail in digital transformation is exactly that point. It's very easy for a very good leader to say, we're gonna change the tech platform, we're gonna change the methodology, we're gonna work around the customer or something. But it's very hard for the human being to say, I have to change myself. I have to change the way I work. I'll stop taking decisions about what's the next product or service, and I'll call my team to do that every day along with the customer. And I'll just plan budgeting, I'll just plan uh, whatever uh, investment I want to do in my teams, and I'll follow up if they are following uh, on the results they promised, the results, the results that we need to pay back our investors. So uh, by changing yourself, you're in the right way of digital transformation. And that's the hardest part that people always miss because they feel, especially when, when you have a very successful company, they feel they can do anything. They feel that they were successful, they will, they will keep succeeding uh, in the future. And uh, digitally, you cannot succeed if you don't change yourself, if you don't change your mind. And that's hard for the human being. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, there, that's no easy task for sure, right? For sure. That's a, that's a great, great thing. So we are here in a fintech conference, right? Actually, in one of the most exciting fintech places in the Americas, which is Atlanta, but virtually this time. Uh, how how does Itaú sees the fintech ecosystem? How 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 did fintechs play into the transformation that or or are playing? But but broadly, you know, how how does Itaú sees that? Do you partner? Do you buy? Do you invest? Do you incubate? Do you do all of that? I mean, mm -hmm. what, how, how's Itaú's relationship with the fintech world? Good. 
so uh, I'll, I'll be very transparent. It's pretty much everything that you've described. So the way we think about this transformation is that uh, before, the digital, before digital came up, right? Before all this vibrant environment of entrepreneurship uh, grew in the last uh, few years, uh, we had a much more stable uh, environment, uh, a market where uh, here in Brazil, for instance, we had some large banks that were our main competitors. We're always looking for uh, banks from the US or Europe that were coming to Brazil to try to compete or something. That was the competition environment. Uh, in the last uh, few years, 10 to five years or something, uh, we saw more and more uh, small companies popping up right? Trying to deliver better results to the customer, trying to offer better services. Uh, we learned that that change was much faster than we were used to see. So, uh, so the first conclusion that we came up with was we have to learn as fast as them, right? How do we insert ourselves into that ecosystem? How can we uh, be, uh, be part of that ecosystem? So uh, our, our conclusion for that was five years ago when we launched at the time what we called a co-working space. We don't call that anymore. We call a network space right now. But that was pretty much a building with a space for 50 startups and uh, was a nonprofit organization that we led. And the idea of this nonprofit organization was to bring all the best entrepreneurs in the country to the same place. The idea was sort of a, how can we build uh, the same uh, environments that the Silicon Valley has here in Sao Paulo, right? And we were trying to do that. We were trying to, be, to bring investors, universities, startups, big, big companies all to the same environment, which five years ago was a building, a five-star building, very small one, again, with the space for 50, for 50 startups. And we had just two rules for that, for that business. Uh, for you to participate on, on the ecosystem, on that ecosystem, uh, you had to be a very, a very top-notch entrepreneur. We, we didn't, uh, we would prefer to have empty spaces than having someone that we didn't consider a very good entrepreneur. And the second rule was you have to work for the ecosystem. You got to make sure that you're helping other companies, that the success of everyone uh, is your success as well. And we had the same approach uh, as a participant of the ecosystem, and we learned a lot. And that ecosystem grew very fast. In 2018, we moved to another building, uh, CINT, by the way, participate uh, in this new one, uh, where we have more than 200 startups and we have something around 30 uh, large companies as well, CINT, one of them. Uh, and uh, again, we're learning a lot on how to work with this environment and how to benefit from it. How can we transform ourselves constantly? How can we bring new talents, new technology? How can we learn to work in better methodologies to remain competitive? In that sense, learning how to participate and how this ecosystem works, uh, we learned as well that fintechs are sort of a everything. We have very important competitors who started as fintechs or still are small companies but are growing. We have very important partners who are fintechs who provide uh, technology or infrastructure for us, for us to build better products to our customers. We have fintechs that are business partners that build products that we sell. Uh, or even fintechs that distribute problems that we produce, right? Uh, products that we produce. So, uh, so, so I would say that there's no single rule. Uh, everyone says fintechs are going to disrupt the market or something. Yes, they are disrupting the market because they are bringing a new mindset. They are bringing new ways of doing business. But it's not only fintechs, as I said in the beginning. It's a whole digital transformation in all the industries. And if you don't have your mindset around the customer, if you don't ask yourself, how can I better provide services to the customer, you will, you will always see fintechs as competitors. But there's big, there are big opportunities to work along with them to provide better services to your customer. So you have to be intellectually honest to always be seeking better services, products, experiences to your customer and to understand the entrepreneurship ecosystem and how can you benefit from it and partner with other companies and, and build a whole new value chain to deliver faster and better services to your customers. Let me get let me get that point and ask how uh, gone about it. Hey, gone. You you've seen that not only on Itaú's case but elsewhere in the world. You you have many clients. Do you think that fintech bank partnership can be beneficial to both ends, or how how, how are you seeing that happen in the world? 
Sure. Uh, well, first, say it is very proud to be part of the Kubus network and ecosystem. This is amazing. This is amazing what's happening there. And I, I see, I see this this new competition and as as an opportunity. Of course, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I tend to see everything as an opportunity. It's my nature. But uh, what, I think what what lies ahead is an acceleration of the digital Darwinism in the business arena. But I think we are just in the beginning of a new year, where uh, we are going to migrate from services, from service economy to the ecosystem economy. So uh, it will probably be the interconnect set, set of services from several players that will uh, allow consumers to fulfill a variety of needs in one integrated experience. So uh, it means a lot that we, we, we can really help this ecosystem to co-creation, to really integrate all these uh, uh, dots uh, among large companies and fintechs and other classes of startups. So I believe it's a huge opportunity uh, and for companies with the kind of expertise and footprint as uh, CINT. And, and somehow we, we can can be a kind of agnostic piece in this puzzle and help these this dots to be connected. So I, I really think it's, it's a huge opportunity, not only for the incumbents to, to get from the innovation, from the velocity or the speed of the fintechs, but from the fintechs to leverage the scale and the learn to a, a company that has regulatory status, has huge customer base and so on. So I think it's, it, it can be very well designed, can be co-created. And in, in terms of customer centrist, it's probably what's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. So we, we are getting uh, on our last five minutes. We are going to go until five here. Uh, and and we, we did get an, a, a question from the audience already. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot that for you, Ricardo. For you, Guerra. It's uh, what is the biggest technology hurdle in your transformation? Well, uh, I would say that when, when you have such a big platform as the one uh, that we do, right? Uh, our current account system started in 1973. Uh, so uh, almost a half a century ago, right? Uh, it's not the easiest thing to migrate to the cloud. Let's build microservices. Let's break the monolith. Let's leave the mainframe, right? Uh, and uh, you can easily get lost in the middle. And uh, we have done that a few times because you're just running technology from pretty much every single year uh, for the last 50 years. Uh, we have something around 10,000 engineers running our platform. And all of a sudden, uh, to have that digital model that I described around the customer, building solutions along with the customer, you have to be able to be uh, as fast as you can. And if you have a, uh, a platform that is still a monolith, that still runs code uh, written in COBOL mainframe, nothing, nothing against the technology, but against the way we used to build code back in the day, right? Where we used to have those uh, million lines of code uh, where uh, for you to uh, do something on, on that legacy, it's very linear. You have to have one idea uh, implement, have the other one implement. And, and the, the sort of a uh, scale up that you can do with services and microservices was not present. Uh, how you tackle that, it's not an easy task. There are many different approaches in different companies. So I would say the biggest hurdle is not to define the strategy, the technology strategy. I think that can be done. And I can tell you most of the companies are working in the modernization along with delivering value to the customer. So no one stops anymore to say, I'm going to change my core system and I'll be back in two years from now. OK, in two years from now, you don't exist anymore, right? So you have to have a methodology where whatever opportunity you are seeing, you're always modernizing your platform, uh, especially because the technology will keep on evolving. You have to learn to transform constantly. Uh, it's not getting out of a mainframe and going to the cloud. It's about learning how to transform constantly. So the biggest hurdle is to teach your 10,000 people at scale to have that mindset, to learn that all the business opportunities and customer services that you are building, you have to look at your platform and say, I have to implement in a new technology. I have to move to something that will be more competitive. 
and, and I think that the sort of a shift in the mindset of tech people is not the easiest one. Uh, if, if you were born uh, in that environment where uh, you know a technology that has to transform all the time, that you already know uh, a technology that is more up to date, I would say, then, then it would be easier. But we're talking about a very good uh, skilled people that work at the bank from, I don't know, uh, that we hired just now, last year, two years ago, or, or 30 years ago. And, uh, and, and by definition, we usually have good people. Uh, we got to make sure that everyone understands that transformation and they're really implementing that modernization in everything that they can, because we really need to speed up everything that we do. So I think the biggest hurdle is around people. It's not around technology. It's how to teach your team that they have to have this mindset so where you can really modernize at scale and keep transforming all the time. All right. Yeah, makes makes complete sense to me. And and you're you're talking all of the top of the experience. That's that's really amazing. Yeah, and and there's there's the this human factor that when you look at the the human capital market, you have a a, a brand new greenfield generation of of developers, architects, and so on. But the real award for a company like Itaú is not a greenfield contest. Uh, where you select the most up-to-date architecture tools and process and, and build your digital. It's really a complex brownfield where you have to deal with most generation of legacy system and, and old technology. And, and that's why we combine that with lack of skills because really it, it's there is a lack of skills on working in this brownfield uh, uh, environment. And as, as Ricardo said, at the end of the day, you need to combine legacy modernization, a lot of legacy modernization, with generating real business value. That is the, the puzzle. Perfect. Perfect. Ricardo, we have one minute. Final remark. What's the what's the message that you pass on to everyone that's uh, watching us here? Customer, customer, customer. That's, that's the key message uh, in digital. Don't forget to understand what value you're trying to bring. What problem are you trying to solve? Ask yourself that all the time. That's what Lean tells you. Ask yourself uh, what problem are you solving? Because it's very easy to get lost building a project or something huge that you don't know anymore why you're doing that. You're just following complex stuff and trying to solve problems. But by the end of the day, you're not adding value to anyone. So uh, ask yourself all the time what you're doing to your customer. Perfect. Go on. I would add that, again. Yeah, I would add that uh, we live in a world of abundance of ideas but the scarcity, scarcity of execution. So my my word is execute, execute. Okay, <laughs> customer and execute, that sounds terrific. Thank you all very much. Uh, Mike, thanks for managing the things in the background, back to you. Thank you all for from the audience. Hope you have enjoyed as much as I did. Thank you. Pleasure, bye. Pleasure, bye-bye.